Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I'm Moshe Kasher. And I'm Natasha Legero. And, you know, you might notice that we're wearing a different outfit than we'll be wearing in the video for the rest of this video. And that's because we taped it on Oscar night. And... Nobody cares about the Oscars anymore. Well, we all know what happened at the Oscars. The oh, right. S- the slap heard around the world. But I don't care about that. Because we have we have more important things happening now in the world than, than always. That. Doesn't it feel like every time you're like, oh, this news story is interesting. Oh no, something so horrifying is happening that there's never a dull moment in these. these no, United it was States. like Donald Trump, COVID, Ukraine, the slap, the slap. <laughs> and now of course <laughs> we just got. The news that the fucking Supreme Court is overturning Roe versus Wade, which is just fucking depressing. Well, honey, um, we are here to be the keeper of uh, good spirits. The keeper of good spirits. Yes. Yes, indeed. I hope and predict that this is a temporary blip of awfulness and that if we were to look back from the future, we would see this as a dark time that got better. I, I hope, but I'll tell you who knows all about the future. Mm. Our guest today. David Cross. Our guest today, who is, just did a stand-up comedy special called I'm from the Future. So he can tell us about it's all so of this. It's so funny. It is very funny. We're very lucky to have him. I'm so excited to talk to him. The he's, one and only. He's waiting for us. We should let him in. He's not really waiting for us because we've already ruined the idea that we're doing this in real time because we're wearing these different outfits. So he was waiting for us. We had this whole thing about the Oscars. And then now here we are. We're kind of like stuck in this depressed feeling because the fucking seismic shift in women's reproductive rights happened tonight. And we're trying to figure out how to talk about it, but also trying not to talk about it in a way that is kind of cringy and cheesy because we haven't even fucking processed it because it happened. Literally, I read the tweet 20 minutes ago. You know what the good news is for you? What's the good news? You're a man. Yeah. You know what the good news for you is? What? You live in California. Oh, I thought you were going to say I I can no longer get pregnant. (laughs) Everybody's been talking all this shit about California for the last few years. Well, listen, give us your tired, hungry masses. We still have reproductive rights here. Come to California. And if you can't afford it, they're going to start these buses. Tosh, do you know about this? No. They're going to start these transport buses taking women from states where they're they are going to repeal the right to abortion they're going to be literally shuttling them into places where they still have that right um, i don't know how do we how do we donate to that that is a good question uh well, next week uh, we'll like i said out. we're still processing we don't have all the information next week we will find a worthy uh place to, for, to donate obviously planned parenthood is a good place to start don't feel helpless i guess is the is the I thing do. look to the future how about that okay cuz i'm are you from the future? I'm not from the future, but actually our guest today, a very exciting guest, is from the future. He just released a stand-up special called I'm from the Future, and he's one of the great comedians, one of the great comedic actors. His special is so funny. Let's talk to him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's cleanse the palate with the one and only David Cross. Um, David, thank you so much for doing this. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Well, we're excited to have you, David, because your special, which we watched today, and it's hilarious, uh, I'm from the future, deals with the fact that you're from the future. <laughs> and we're currently two hours away from the Oscars, and this episode will come out when the Oscars have already happened. So we thought well, that'd be kind of a cool opportunity. So for what's you. the point? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. What's the point of even, of even doing a podcast, period? Well, anyone who, yeah. who agrees to do a podcast on Oscar Day just doesn't really care about the Oscars, probably. Right. Like, I don't care about them. Well, we just wanted I, to know what your predictions are for who's going to win the best picture this evening. That, and then wh- by the time yeah. this comes out, people will either know that you're a fool or, kn- <laughs> or know that you truly knew what you were talking about being from the future. Um, okay. Uh, oh, so you want me to tell you, not make a prediction. You want me to tell you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, that's highly unethical. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I will tell you that uh, I feel strongly that Jack Nicholson is going to run the table Uh and uh, he will be he will win for every single thing that he's nominated for. Um, And I think 
Meryl Streep. I, I feel pretty good about Meryl Streep this year, as well as Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the lady, the English lady, the dame? And, Judy Dench. Uh, and yep, and Helen Mirren, and not Daniel Olivia Day Coleman. Lewis. Okay. Daniel Day Lewis. And, uh, and the kid, and I think that kid will do well. Timothy Chalamet. Thank you for finally <laughs> referencing him. I knew you were going to bring him up at some point. Um, that's because you're from the future. That's right. <laughs> no, but watch. All right, so that's that was Moshe's question for you. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm guessing we've started. <laughs> yeah, no, the po- the podcast is in full swing. Wait, I have some right. real questions though for you, David, because I was I really loved your special, and you talk a lot about covid and dealing with people and i've kind of had to deal with some people in my life who i've had to kind of snip away because Mm -hmm. of covid and i was wondering have you had to get rid of any relationships and do you have any advice on how to do that um uh, i kind of went about it uh, uh from a different angle i suppose but i kind of cut off anybody who got COVID Um, (laughs) and I'm not interested in uh, talking to them, being their friend, uh, post recovery too, no matter what, after they recover. Yeah. yeah, No matter what. Got it. Um, uh, No, I have, I have not, uh, there have been like friends of friends and friends of my family, uh, but nobody that I, Nobody close to me or even not not even that close, but uh, nobody in my circle that I had to go, what the fuck, dude? Like um, there there have been a handful of people that are, you know, acquaintances or or, or kind of friends that have kind of tenuous with and haven't been really that close to in, in, you know, over a decade and friends of family, um, but nobody really close no what's so funny about these people too because they're, they're usually not in your close circle but they're like a, a friend's husband or whatever it's like yeah and they'll be yeah. really nice to you when they see you but then online they kind of lash out like it's it's an odd thing well natasha has somebody that's a dear friend who is constantly on her instagram just posting like <laughs> you just got trumped bitch and then we'll come by the house and be like hey natasha how's it going very no, sweet and demure. it's it's a it's a weird thing because it's like they're not they're only aggro online but still it's like it makes me not want to invite the friend anymore because her husband sure. and yeah so it's just it's a hard yeah situation. I, I get it i i mean i part of it perhaps is uh getting older and you just have a uh just as you get older you have a sense of like I, what am i even i don't care why am i worrying about this this isn't my best friend it's not even my Second, third, fourth, fifth best friend. Not right. that I rank my friends. <laughs> I do it every Friday. I, I the rankings come out, but um, but you rank I, you rank Oscar winners and actors, right? Jack Nicholson <laughs> being at the top. Uh, Jack Nicholson is uh, second. Oh wow! Uh, to yeah, the kid, Ray Milland. Ray Milland is always <laughs> number one. Um, I, but you just like I don't have any patience, and I don't care, and and I've you know uh, I'm. I'm not the most, uh, I mean, I can be affable, but I'm not by nature. And uh, I can't I just, believe you agreed to do this podcast. I thought you hated us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a feeling. Of, I didn't think you had a feeling about me one way or the other, but Natasha is revealing wait, her cards. Natasha, say that again. You thought I hated you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. No, I'm just saying like, I was like so excited that you were going to do it. And I was like, oh, when I see him, I can never tell, you know, I mean, I, I'm saying I agree with you that maybe... <laughs> Oh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Sure, I've gotten that a lot. I, you know, I maybe I, I've definitely gotten that before, uh, where I think I'm <laughs> friendly and approachable, and people are like, "Yeah, you were a real dick." It was, uh, you know. But um, well, David, I've never met you, and I always felt that you probably had a great deal of enthusiasm for me, and just thought the world of me. Is that basically true? Yeah, I mean, I hug you a lot. Yeah. And I, and I, I think he's just learning who you are, honey. Oh, one thing we were wondering, by the way, David, in watching your special is like a lot of the thematic stuff in it and through your the your whole work as a, as a comedian is, uh, you know, you have a in some ways like a, a the subject matter is can be dour and scary stuff, you know, especially this special. It's all COVID. You have a kid, right? How do you do you to what extent do you give 
your concerns about the future, about the world, about these topics to your kids? Zero percent? We have a four-year-old, so we're like constantly trying to figure out what to yeah, say. Yeah, how to much them. darkness to provide um, them and when. <laughs> I mean, I, re- I really don't. Uh, and I find myself like checking myself because I want to make a joke that only I would get, that a five-year-old would get, <laughs> uh, when she asks me a question to my, you know, my immediate cynical sarcastic comment which would be hilarious if she was smart uh (laughs) but she's not so i i i'm uh and i and i this is how i changed as a person since she was born but i i have to find uh optimism in things i normally wouldn't um i wouldn't actively try to find optimism in things and when i find myself going down that uh, kind of rabbit hole that can lead to depression and, um, you know, anxiety. I try to check that as well because I can't afford to do that now because of her. I just try to think differently, I suppose, even though it goes against my nature, uh, but to, to find hope and optimism. Uh, and I wouldn't, it's going to be a while before I'm really, completely honest with her about stuff like that. Well, what are you optimistic about? And by the way, that is such a great way to just reframe things for the good of the child. Like I want to try to start doing that. No, that's good. uh, I'll tell you what I'm optimistic about is, uh, and it's corny as shit, but uh, is kids. And I, I hang out with, she has play dates all the time and I volunteer at her school and amazing. you know, all kinds of stuff that the, the kids or class does, uh, you know, and, and they were just so did a performance for, you know, Black History Month and did this whole thing. And uh, uh, and that is, and, and her, you know, I live in Brooklyn. She goes to public school. So her her world is as it's like a U.N. meeting. You know, it's like it's as diverse mm-hmm. as you could ever hope for. And, uh, and that gives me optimism and, and it, and it's kind of where the, uh, I don't want to do my bit or give too much away, but the, the title of the show I'm from the future comes from a specific bit where I'm talking to children. I'm talking to children about what they're going to be like when they're older and what will make them upset. And, uh, and that comes from, hanging out with all those kids who are, uh, again, I know this is trite and, you know, an observation that's been made a million times, but it's true. And they're not racist. They're not, they're just pure existentialists. They're, they're, everything is new and they have a lot of questions and it's all accepted. You know, it's, it's, there's no, there's no barriers, you know, see our, our child, we've, is racist and she she adapted that very young and we no but don't even make fun of that here's let me just tell you i this is what she (laughs) said no because she said this to me just before we talked to you i just put her down for her nap and she goes mom i have to tell you something it's 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 gonna make you upset it's worse than slavery and i said okay and she was like well why is your hair brown and mine is blonde and I was like, well, you know, people have different hair colors. And she's like, well, what if there becomes slavery for blonde hair and brown hair? Yikes. And- it's like when you think you've taught them the lesson and you're like, oh, so you missed the whole thing. huh?" <laughs> but David, I mean, what do I I mean, what can I do except just keep reiterating that? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying it is a it is a hard situation that isn't. Isn't that the isn't that the evidence that slowly, even though her mind is not developed, kind of to your point, David, like when you, you want to make a sarcastic joke, but you know she won't get it. Like she's not quite getting the gravity of the situation, but she's slowly becoming aware that there are unfairnesses in the world that feel based on complete arbitrary selection points, right? That were wrong and that are no longer. And yeah, that- even though she doesn't quite get it. Yeah, I mean, she at this stage, she's just go, you know, the word she doesn't understand the concept and she knows it's a bad thing. And she knows she has this very, very vague, probably fleeting idea like, oh, it's 
uh, you know, it's bad to be held against your will. And even that might be a difficult concept for her to grasp, but she's just going off of your reaction to it. Right. Yeah. She seems to think when we, when we were, we were out giving um, these like care packs to, uh, to unhoused people. And she was like, we have to help the homeless. We have to help the homeless. And then we got home and she was like, clearly thought they were camping like there was no understanding (laughs) that they were in some kind of a dire situation at all and then she got mad at me and said mom you're just homeless (laughs) and i'm like no like that's not a negative it's it's just so hard i mean i i feel with you like emotions like you have to stop trying to convince everyone to have a child because i'm with you i feel like it's so special and it's so amazing to be having these little lives that are so innocent. We never said the words Trump around her. She still doesn't know who Trump is. And I don't know. It just feels like you could, you know, just have her be so open. And like you said, be in these diverse situations that I was never in. And, and do you feel like David, I'm curious, like that, this is something that I experienced having a kid. And I think it has something to do with the comic temperament, which is that we're we're so sarcastic and so negative so much of the time, because that's kind of the job is to find the stupidity Mm -hmm. in the world that I wasn't even prepared for the level of innocence that a kid would bring to my life. Like I wasn't, (laughs) I wasn't prepared that a person would be that, sort of optimistic and positive it's and a, it's a it's a tough audience you know <laughs> you have to you have to we get uh, it you bomb think motion. on the fly and you're you have to reassess your your uh, set you know for them i know she definitely does understand that we like it when she's funny so she's <laughs> she's working on a lot yes. of knock knock jokes our, our daughter um oh what not i can't look at this can you see this this is I don't know. Wait, where it is? Yeah, there. That's a list of knock knock joke stuff because I went, yeah, I went on. She's into knock knock jokes now. So I just went online and I wrote all these down because when I walk her to school, uh, if I need them, I got them in my, can, you know, my figurative back pocket. So if there's any kind of meltdown coming, I can go knock knock, you know, who's there? Got, uh, cash. Cash who? Oh, no, thank you. I'd prefer peanuts. Oh, yeah. The classic <laughs> misdirect. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you have like and actually a set list for walking her to school. I, we, <laughs> got, here, here we, we got a good one. And, and her favorite one is a little blue. I don't know if you're ready for it's actually it's are you are you comfortable with like strong language? Uh, it, it, it's relative, but let's see what you got. All right. Uh, this is her favorite. Knock, knock. Who's there? Madame. <laughs> Madame who? Madame pants keep falling off. <laughs> Come on, that's, that's a, a good one. That's a classic. That's a bit beyond my my uh, my. She her thing is like when she runs out of the five or six that she knows, uh, then it's like knock knock, who's there? Uh, p- uh, poopy onion, poopy <laughs> onion head. That's uh, poopy onion head. Who? Poopy onion head. What? I'm just joking. What? That's crazy. It seems like our kids have actually been in contact with one another because it seems very similar. Or maybe your daughter's a joke thief. I don't know. It feels very similar to what my daughter's working with. It could be. There's a lot of knock, knock, tree, tree, who, tree, tree. Ha ha. Is that a funny joke, dad? <laughs> like, no, <Yeah>. not yet. <laughs> um, well, David, you seem like a font of wisdom. Um, I'm not saying that sarcastically. I know that I mean, you've already told me something that I really want to work on, which is just switching to optimism so maybe if we call it's someone hard. i know it's hard and it's unnatural but yeah it's helpful is and it feigned david or is it or are you forcing yourself to find true optimism or are you doing a performance of optimism for them because you don't want to give over negativity that is a fucking great question and i think i hadn't really thought about it but i think it is kind of feigned uh <laughs> act as if so it's feigned but then it must have some bear it must you know affect you in but some way. I, I do yes but i do also uh it, it is true what i say when i'm uh you know i'm with a bunch of kids a lot and whether it's just like you know two or three or more than that but i'm with kids just you know play date stuff and all that and and you know not saying that uh, uh literally a, a quarter of the time is is spent you know, uh, trying to get somebody not to cry or go give her the ball back or what are those, you know, that's a lot of it. But, uh, also with all the kids, uh, it's just, it is hopeful. It is. And, and, you know, there's a part of me, it's like, well, they're going to be shitty teens, <laughs> you know, not too long and they're going to be mean to each other. And, and, you know, girls can be so mean and boys can be so cruel. And, uh, you know, when that bullying comes and, 
I, I taught her today. I taught her the word taunting because she she had made a friend in the playground and they were kind of racing around and then she like sat on a bench and she had won and she's like, you're a loser. I was like, no, 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 no. And she, you know, she picked that up from somewhere as all right. the kids, you know, and she picked it up from somewhere. I was like, and I explained to her that was taunting and taunting's not good. And you don't want anybody to do that to you. And, uh, and that's just human nature. So I'm trying to enjoy it in the, you know, these innocent stages while I can, because it's going to get ugly. Totally. She's a girl. Girls are so cruel. But the thing is, I feel like... Tell our, me about it, brother, <laughs> by the way. Our kids, though, are, are they're going to grow up in a little bit different way than us, because, I mean, we didn't think, like, the world had it, like, was about to end. <laughs> like, these kids are, like, hearing about the environment and how much responsibility they have to take, and, you know, they're, the, they're like, the new stewards of the planet. Natasha, I, I, I would... Uh, ask you to think about when, you know, the first, because uh, I remember uh, the Vietnam War. I mean, I'm older, obviously, but uh, I remember the Watergate. I don't remember it, remember it, but I remember everybody talking about it. I remember the adults talking about Watergate and uh, and the Vietnam War and seeing image uh, of the girl, the napalm, you know, the naked girl who's like 10 years old, uh, the Southern Vietnamese girl and the yeah. uh, um, and I mean, I grew up with that. I grew up with uh, the remnants of the Cold War. I grew up uh, so, uh, you know, and that's when the uh, ecology movement was starting and all that stuff. So I do remember and there, you know, assassinations and, you know, the shit in the Middle East and uh, Anwar Sadat being assassinated. And uh, I, I I mean, that's, you know, obviously we didn't have wall to wall 24 hour news coverage, but neither do kids, you know, right. and she won't. And we don't really have TV on. We have, we'll watch cartoons at some point and, you know, uh, kind of like educational things. But we don't like she doesn't sit in front of the iPad. There's not a TV news going on. You know, there's no grandpa here, you know, going, what? Turn it up. You know, and we don't have that. Um, although that'll be me shortly. But uh, um, so basically, so, I mean, it's, it's she, always been like this, you're saying. I think it has. Yeah. Yeah. And- We're not special. In fact, in fact, it used to be worse. It used to be better and worse. I hear what you're saying that there's an existential dread at the end of the. We're feeling like we're looking at the end of the of the line, but also <laughs> there was active war all throughout the world for hundreds and hundreds of years, yeah. and kids found a way to be happy and right. be positive. And 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 you know these these kids are. Um, uh, I mean, one of her closer friends is a trans girl who was at three. She was she was trans. She had declared three. And and I, you know, and she only knows her as a girl and she's going to be seven very shortly. And, and uh, you know, we just know her as it, it, that's that's what she knows. And and she's going to know uh, and there's going to be an acceptance of that. Um, and look, you know, we're we're in Brooklyn, too, which is uh, very progressive, tolerant, you know, neck of the woods. And, uh, um, but I mean, these are, these are the people she's growing up with and her friends and these are, and the authority figures are teaching her acceptance too, and teaching all the other kids acceptance. So that's something that, I mean, fuck it. I never had, I mean, I went to, you know, I was called faggot and, you know, Jew and had dimes thrown at me and, you know, uh, you must have collected the dimes, right? That just as a Jew, you must have picked them. It must've been hard to pick them up, but you had to do it anyway. Yeah. I just, I had, uh, you know, I, I had these like, um, baggies sewn into my, <laughs> uh, into my jackets and I would, I'd make a mental note, like, okay, the tree by the swing, if you go about 10 paces, there's going to be 20 cents there. Yeah, when your parents found out people were throwing dimes at you, they sewed the baggies in to make sure you collected yeah. them the next day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that makes me feel, I mean, it doesn't make me feel better, but I guess it ma- puts it into perspective. We heard a great story about, oh, we should do a call. Sorry, Natasha. I know you're trying to get to the call. We heard this great story about tolerance of kids now from a friend of ours. They're, they were in high school in L.A., and their friend came out to them and said, I'm gay. Do you accept me? And then the, the, the girl goes, I'll accept you if you're really gay and not just doing it for likes. And it was like, <laughs> what? That's the most bizarre paradigm shift I could imagine. That's, that is good. 180. That is a total 180. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, David, we're going to take a call. Hopefully you're okay Wait, with is that. Is this live? 
No, but we can no. cut anything out. But people okay, people know. are waiting to talk to us live in a way. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Well, basically, they call Me in either. with advice questions, and you can either choose to give them sincere advice, to make fun of them for asking for advice, or to do a combination <laughs> of both. Okay. All right, so we're going to call Riley in, oh. Your neighbor. Brooklyn. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Uh, once again, I got to say, you are looking perfect in your in your chesty old area. Thank you. I have on my Third Love 24-7 Classic t-shirt bra. Do you love it? I love it. And it is also their number one bra for a reason. It offers unparalleled comfort thanks to every unique, unique detail in its fit, style, function, and design. It's loved and worn by millions of women, including me. It doesn't pinch or dig, and you won't take it off the moment you walk in the door. Well, I can tell you this. Natasha took the Fit Finder quiz on their website. She found a perfectly sized bra, and she wears it all the time. And I will tell you, it looks good on you. And I thought I was an A, but I'm an A and a half. And that's what's so cool about these bras, is that they have the actual sizes, like half sizes. Not only that, they're the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S. They partner with organizations across the United States, and they've donated over $40 million worth of bras to help people in need. So, if Feeling is believing. Give your boobs the 24-7 comfort and support they deserve. Upgrade your bra today and get 20% off your first order today at thirdlove.com slash honeymoon. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh? You know, I made a fatal mistake today. What? I called a doctor that I didn't find on ZocDoc, mm-hmm. and I couldn't get through, and I couldn't get an appointment. And I then went to ZocDoc, and I found an appointment like that. Really? It's the best. I love ZocDoc. No one knows what you're looking for in a doctor better than you, and no one's better at giving you the tools to find the perfect doctor than ZocDoc. The people who created ZocDoc found the major pain points in healthcare, all the things that weren't working, and said enough, like Moshe. They made booking a great doctor surprisingly pain-free. It is pain-free. I'm not kidding. You get this app or you go it's to their free. website. It's free. You just put in what you want. You can put in a specialist. You can and you can find the doctor closest to you that has availability. Everything's patient-reviewed. It's awesome. That day, and you can click on the doctor, see their profile. I use this service, and I love it. And I've used it and gone to a doctor, and I've also used it for a Zoom doctor, so you can do both. It's awesome. So go to ZocDoc.com slash Honeymoon and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Honeymoon. ZocDoc.com slash Honeymoon. All right, so we're going to call Riley in Oh, your neighbor. Brooklyn. Okay. Riley? I'll hear a real person. Yeah, oh, okay. you'll see them too. They're coming up any second now. Okay. Hello. Riley. Hello. Are hey, Riley. you there? Hold on. We're waiting to see you. Hey, there's I'm Riley. Here. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? We're Turn great. your radio down. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, it's Natasha Moshe and our friend David Cross. Hey, guys. How are Hi. you doing? Good. And we don't mean to make you too nervous, Riley, but David is actually in Brooklyn right now. So, like, yeah. he's close to you. What, what oh, part of boy. Brooklyn are you in, Riley? Uh, I'm in Clinton Hill. Oh, okay. He's yeah, not, he's not going to tell you if that's close to his house. Yeah, yeah. he won't tell you what kind of part of Brooklyn he's in, but let's just move on. Riley, what's up? How can we help? What would you call us about? My late girlfriend and I, who dated for about eight months. Um, I'm sorry to hear she passed. <laughs> She is a, she is alive. I didn't oh. kill her or anything. Okay. Um, what do you mean by late? Us. You <laughs> mean ex? My ex, yes. Your yes, ex. Yes. You don't say late at all. That's not <laughs> what you say. Well, I'm still learning. I'm young. No, but I'm yes, so glad to be able to don't teach you. Don't throw it in our face, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, your ex girlfriend. Yes, my ex girlfriend. Um, May she rest in we peace. had a relationship for about eight months. Um, and it ended because she discovered that I had been unfaithful to her um, back when we were on break, winter break. We're both uh, students. Um, and so we spent about nearly two months apart from each other. And, and I cheated on her and she discovered this about a week ago. Um, and we, of course, she was, you know, heartbroken and I, I um, you know, felt incredibly bad for her and, and um, her situation and how I made her feel. 
Um, but we are to, at this point, we're still both hopeful to rekindle things in the future. Um, and my question to you guys is, is it um, realistic to expect a, a potential like rekindling after like a summer break from each other? Um, and do you think it will be able to return to the way that it once was? Is that possible? And also, how should I transition from loving her, which I still do, into um, entering a, a platonic friendship with her, which I'm having lots of trouble with? So you don't want to get back together as a couple? We do. We do. Um, you're but you're saying in, in, the, in the meantime, how do you stay in a platonic relationship with someone that you have feelings for, but that you've betrayed. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Intense. Um, David, anything strike out, jump out to you? Do you have any thoughts? You know, I mean, I would say, uh, do you, why do you want to get back together and, uh, uh, and be perfectly honest here? Why is it about, uh, sex? Is it about the idea that you lost someone and now you want them back? Is that what's, do you, were you okay when you cheated on her with the idea like, uh, well, she may find out and, you know, such is life and life goes on. And, uh, I mean, how did, how did you feel about that? And how do you feel now? Well, um, yeah, when, when it happened, I, and afterwards, while I continued to not tell her, right, and, and keep it from her, I felt, you know, every day that, uh, that I didn't tell her, I was, you know, deteriorating our relationship, basically, even though I didn't have the guts to, like, tell her myself. And now that she has found out, I do feel, like, a certain amount of relief, strangely, but I love her very much and she's an incredible person who i don't want to lose in my life um and i don't value our relationship our sexual relationship over our um you know spiritual okay. relationship or yeah intellectual relationship so, so what, what made you uh what made you go uh i mean was it a of like spur of the moment one night stand type of thing or was it somebody yeah it was yeah a totally a uh, random person who right. i never knew before and how did about. she find how did she find out she found uh, a screenshot in my camera roll of a text with this person so were you kind of yeah why did you screenshot that text <laughs> yeah that's a good question that i don't have the answer to myself but i you were you, you kind of trying to get caught basically because you couldn't bring yourself to tell her is that part of it that's the, that's a, it's immediately what I thought of subconsciously you know, trying to get caught. I don't. It, I might it might have been an unconscious move. I you know because as, as an I older as an older man, do. Riley, as an older man, if I'm cheating, I'm deleting. You know, it's a classic <laughs> right. saying. I'm not keeping a screenshot around that's like a Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb to the the girl that I'm. <laughs> it's not happening. So it's got to be that's something. Not- Actually, right. the house. It's not, <laughs> not even the Brady, the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Riley, one thing I, I'll say, I, I don't, I didn't love your language. You're like, you know, her situation. It's like, this is your fault. You did this. Yeah. And I think yeah. that, you know, maybe showing her in a way that is, you know, that you're taking the, 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 the blame for this and, and really apologize because it happens, but it definitely can't happen twice. That's that's one thing. I, it sounds like you feel bad, but you don't want to lose your friendship and connection with her, but you are less concerned with losing her as a girlfriend and having that physical relationship. That's what it sounds like to me. Yes, I'm I. Yeah, if you know, the worst case scenario is we completely lose touch. Um, the in best case scenario is we can rekindle a re romantic relationship, but I would, I definitely want to preserve a friendship at the very least. Yeah. I think you're right. David. That's now, my... I'm curious. Like, do you, 
is that really fully true or is it that you feel so bad that you want her to be your friend so that you can get let off the moral hook that she'll still be in your life and then you'll feel absolved or do you really it's really that you need this woman in your life no i, I definitely need her as she's um she's done a lot for me since i've known her and i you know, respect her very very much and i i um i don't really see myself you know, being happy without her, at least as a friend in my life, someone to talk to. See, and share. you keep saying at least as a friend. It sounds to me like you love her as a friend. You, 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 maybe she like inspires you, helps you with your career. She helps you with something in the sense that she feels very important to you. But maybe you're not as sexually attracted to her as you would hope. And it's very hard for a woman to be like cheated on and then become friends with a with a guy. I, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do that. Is is think. Natasha and David's kind of getting at this? Are they spot on in saying that like your feelings, romantic feelings for her, aren't where you wish that they were? But you no, you really love her and want to be with her romantically. Absolutely, got it. One hundred percent. Yeah. Here are my. I have some. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. For, first of all, I'm gonna give you a pass on the la- inaccurate language because you're on a podcast. You're probably nervous, you know. But just to say, like, you're not. This isn't. You're not the first person to cheat on someone. You're not the first couple to have gone through this. It's possible to rekindle a situation like this. It doesn't. It's also possible that you've uh, it, that you've permanently damaged this thing, and it can never be what it was. But the truth is, once you cheat, and you're going to get many more opportunities to cheat in the future. I mean, you're an Abercrombie and Fitch model. <laughs> like, there's no way around that, right? You're good looking. You're good looking. I should have said American Apparel. That's more accurate, Brooklyn. But like, it's going to come up again, right? But it's like, and but what happened when she found out, and when you did it, is that all of the responsibility for deciding whether or not this thing will be rekindled, all of that went onto her side. Your job is to sit there, be a nice guy, wait, and see what happens. She might decide she can never forgive you. She might decide that she's down to forgive you. You have to work hard on yourself. But you, there's no thing, no part of this is like you going, "Please take me back," because that's totally her decision. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, I I just think that, you know, if I were in her situation, I would think that if someone really showed me that they were serious and that they were sorry and like, could you work a little extra hard to woo her back and Mm -hmm. let her know that you're not seeing anyone else and how important this relationship is. And if you're really down to commit to her, I think you just have to reiterate it. Tell her you're here waiting. You don't want to date other people and you just have to make it really clear. Don't you think, David? yeah, and you have to describe to her uh, in in specific detail what was better about the sex you had with the other person. <laughs> <laughs> that she will appreciate that. David is not, he's not stringing you out. He's not sabotaging he you. She'll like love it. She's not. Right. But. We're older than you. We know these things. That, that They'll really, she'll respond to that. Oh goodness! What there's a saying there's a saying in AA that uh, they used to say uh, the trust bucket fills up one drop at a time, but it only takes one kick to knock the whole thing over. So you just kicked it over, and now you just got to put it right back up and see what happens. I mean, you know, I don't think you're a bad person yet, but you did a bad thing, and so you just have to like kind of be patient with her. I mean, she's probably feeling incredibly betrayed for as as it's, upset as you feel not to have her in your life she doesn't have you in her life and she got cheated on and it's so fucked up that she had to find out from like sleuthing as opposed yes. to you telling her mm-hmm. because that makes you got to work even harder now i agree i wish i had i had told her and been straight up with her um i yeah that is certainly and i i've i've taken steps now since it's only been you know about a week and a half but i've you know got in touch with a therapist and i'm going to therapy now with someone who who do not fuck the therapist (laughs) he's about a 70 year old man so he didn't ask you any demographic information he said do not fuck the therapist and have you ever written a poem, Riley? Maybe you could try to like woo her. Look and- at him. Of course he's written a poem. <laughs> I feel your uh, angst. So have, but- put it on paper. And- Show her. Give her some flowers. Just do it like, just try some different angles. Let her know you're in therapy. Ask the therapist what to say. Like give her a little something yeah. all the time and tell her you want to yeah. win back her trust. Natasha's right. I know yeah. it's hard, honey, but you know. 
I'll tell you what won't bring her back quickly is beating yourself up over it and feeling guilty all the time. It's all about doing positive things for her and showing her that you're doing the right thing. It's not about wallowing on what a piece of shit you are. And even though you probably feel like one, uh, there's no nothing good comes of that. So just I do I do think it's telling though that you said that you regret uh, not telling her, uh, but you don't regret cheating on her. Like, that wasn't the regret. I'm not trying to be funny. It's a it's just something that. Uh, you know, stood out to me when you said that. You're like, I regret that I didn't tell her because of what I was I thought you were saying. I regret that I cheated on her. Um, so that's well, a that's less of a regret. Well, no, I I mean, I I don't know if I maybe I didn't have the opportunity in front of me to say that I regret that, but I, of course I do regret that um, more than I re- regret not telling her because I wouldn't be in that situation if I. Well, look, if nothing, if nothing else, this is a, and it may not seem like it now that you're smack dab right in it, but this is a, a great learning opportunity and it's, uh, mm. you know, it's going to inform you what, and what you do, your next, uh, actions in the coming days and weeks and months are going to inform who you are and, uh, who you grow up to be, um, mm. You know, and it's a it's a valuable experience. I think most of us have had at some point. It's not easy. It's not fun. It's not good. But you find out about yourself. Yeah. All right, Riley. Well, good luck. All right, Riley. See you at Hartley's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that's like a cool bar. <laughs> it's a great bar in Clinton Hill. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Fantastic. Riley. Yep. Good luck. Plan good a luck plan too. a really rom- romantic Thank date. So okay. And find out what yeah. happens. All right. Let us know. By the way, keep in touch with us. Tell us what happened. And you absolutely. Know, as she works absolutely on forgiving you, you work on forgiving yourself, and someday both of you will do both. I can almost guarantee it. Oh, thank you. Thank okay. you for the uh, the inspiration. Cool. Uh, Good luck. Thank you, guys. Bye. I mean, how are how can people be young and cute and not cheat? It seems really. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. shouldn't shouldn't we say like? Hey, we've all cheated numerous times. <laughs> well, it, it is. So, we let him know. It is so true. Like, w- it's the kind of situation that is both rem- remarkable when you're in it and unremarkable to listen to. It's like, yeah, so many people have done this, but yeah. what can you do? Poor Riley. I mean, to me, I'm thinking like this relationship's but over a, and you don't know it yet. He's a kid. He's exactly. a kid. He's a kid. You know, he's a kid. I yeah. Don't know. So it's um, part of life. They all are. When they most of the people that call us are people like learning lessons for the first time. I feel like. Yeah, it makes me feel old. Well, well, that's why we have wisdom. Okay, good. Or something like that. Okay, do you have time for one more call, David? I do. Okay. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know it's a stressful time for people and a stressful time for women right now. Do not neglect your mental health as well as your physical. We want to recommend to our listeners that they try finding a therapist on Talkspace. There's something rejuvenating about getting down to what's essential in life and starting fresh. Same goes with your mind. Over the years, thoughts and emotions can build up, and that's why it's important to talk to someone who's trained to help you declutter your mental space. It's important, and it's scary to take that big first step to getting a therapist, and Talkspace has completely made the scary part easy. No matter where you are in your mental health journey, talking to a therapist who's trained, it really helps and it makes a big difference. And Talkspace makes it more affordable, easier to access. It's awesome. They have 24-7 text, audio, and video messaging. And once you match with one of their licensed therapists, you can message them anytime through the app or schedule a live session if you need some FaceTime. It's private, it's secure, and most importantly, it's accessible. If thoughts and emotions are piling up, a fresh perspective can help you feel better. So match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com and use the promo code HONEYMOON during sign up to get $100 off your first month. Whoa, $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code HONEYMOON. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know what I'm craving right now? What? Some mother effing cake. Oh my God, that would be so good. Wouldn't it be nice to have a big fat layered cake right now? You know oh. the best cake I've ever had? What? Milk bar. Oh, that confetti cake? That confetti cake is good. The compost cookie they make is good. The milk bar pie made from toasted oat crust with a gooey butter filling is good. They've even got this brand new strawberry shortcake and they've got cake truffles. I want them now. Hey, or have a party. 
the last few years we've had to cancel way too many things with our friends. Not this year. We're back. It's time to party. Get Milk Bar delivered to your friend's house. Have a few friends over. Just do this. Have cake. It's almost Mother's Day. Why don't you get your mom a cake? You know she would like a cake. She doesn't want no fucking detritus of a dying flower. She wants some cake. They've got nationwide delivery. And it's freaking delicious. Right now, Milk Bar has a special limited time offer. You get $10 off any order of $50 or more when you go to MilkBarStore.com slash Honeymoon. That's $10 off an order of $50 by going to MilkBarStore.com slash Honeymoon. MilkBarStore.com slash Honeymoon. We're going to call Sasha in Atlanta. Oh, wow. This is... um from Brooklyn to Atlanta. Oh yeah, this is your full uh, life life yeah. arc, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're from Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. You just gotta hit, hit Boston and we'll be uh, we'll be all good. <laughs> all right, here comes Sasha. Hey, there she is. How you doing, Sasha? Hi. Hi. Hey, hey Sasha. Hi. It's uh, Moshe Kasher, <laughs> Natasha Legero, and David Cross here joining us. Um, have you ever cheated on anyone? <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Did. It happened. Yeah. I- yeah, well, we were, but it wasn't we just, a big deal. It was like a, I was a freshman, and I just like made out with someone. I don't think it's that serious. That's the right attitude. There you go. So what's up? Um, so I'm having this problem with my husband. I think he smokes too much weed, mm-hmm. which kind of makes me sound like a narc at first, but it's um, it's becoming a problem as we get older, and I'm kind of ready to like grow up a little, you know, start focusing on, um, important things like around the house and, you know, uh, but so I feel like that's getting in the way of him growing up a little bit. And I don't know how to tell him that it's a, it's a big problem for me. What behavior does he exibit that is like you feel you, he's just gets stoned and doesn't want to help you around the house. Yeah, he, um, it's just like so constant too, you know, it's like from the time he wakes up to the time we go to bed and he's tried to um, get sober like twice now. And I just noticed that when he's sober, he's like active and just really lively. He's helping around the house. He's like participating in our life. Um, But then, you know, when he smokes that much, it's like, but it's like um, we don't really hang out, you know. I feel like have, one of those empty commercials. <laughs> well, no, I know what you're talking about, though. Uh, ha- have you uh, mm-hmm. approached him about kind of, um, you know, I-, I assume you've you've communicated that you think it's too much or however you worded it, but um, that you don't mind the idea that he gets high, but you don't like it that he's constantly high. Yes. Yeah. And I think he realizes it, it's a problem himself, but I don't think he understands. I don't know if I've actually flat out said that. I've just, okay. Well, that's the first thing you got to do. Yeah. Uh, it's not calling a, a podcast. And, uh, <laughs> hey, wait a no, second. I think this is a really good idea that you called us. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he knows that. No, no. Well, I'm with David. Don't assume. I mean, kind don't of assume. Have about it. No, I mean, it wasn't flat out, but I have told him that, like, I think it's holding him back. Hold, hold on. But I don't think he knows how big of a problem that is for me. Like, I don't know if this relationship will work in right. two years. Well, let so, David let David finish the thought, because I think he was really on to something. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> we've been smoking. Um, we've been smoking all afternoon, by the way. <laughs> um, I think where I was going was that. Uh, 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 have you talked about. Um, like uh, changing the strain, could... like <laughs> more like upbeat strain. Switching to sativa would be actually a really good <laughs> <Right>. conversation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, no, I was thinking like a almost like the way you reward a kid. Like once you do this thing, then you get to have dessert, or uh, in that in that kind of um, the idea that you know, look, I. And again, this is all for you to say in your own words, however you would say it. But, um, you know, you're you can acknowledge and you have acknowledged that you're definitely more active when you're not high. So what if you, you know, if you if you, you know, 
get get up, get high, whatever you got to do. But I need you from two to seven and I need you to not be high from two to seven because we got stuff to do. And then you can get high once we finish the, you know, the siding or the gutter or whatever the thing you want to do. Um, I, I And I, I'm not being very uh, articulate, but that's the idea that. Well, Sarah Silverman talked about that in her book, like as a treat, like keeping it mm-hmm. as a treat, you know, but I can tell from your face that you don't think he would respond to that well. No, I think it's that you don't want him to smoke at all. Am I? <laughs> Who's right? <laughs> um, well, you're both right, because I've tried this before. I realized that he I realized that he needed to put his energy somewhere else. So I encouraged him to pick up wakeboarding. He's like really active and he loves board sports and he did. And it was a really good replacement for a while. But then he just got back into it. And I at this point, I don't know if it's like almost a medical necessity, because when he tries to quit, he gets so depressed and like anxious and i also don't want to make him quit if it's something that he really needs well natasha was kind of joking but i mean uh for real there's probably other strains and there's other (laughs) you can go uh i mean you can experiment with other weed that will for for real i mean i smoke high uh, sativa all the time and but you know moshe's like very moshe's always telling me i don't have a problem (laughs) So I well, I'm, I'm in the opposite <laughs> camp. I encourage Natasha to get high sometimes when I can tell she needs it. She doesn't smoke. She's uh, it does, from dawn till dusk like your husband. But I'll definitely say like, oh, you should go smoke. Chill out. Take take a, you know, give yourself a break. You're stressed. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of encourage it. But I don't have what you're t- describing, which is looking at a pattern of behavior that I've decided is connected to drug use. And, you know, that that it starts to pervert the thing. So now I can even tell in your in your in your facial expression, every time somebody mentions him smoking in a maintenance way, you grimace because you've decided that with the weed, he's fucked up and there has to be a full detachment from it. Yeah, because I watched him try to regulate it so, so many times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he would try to like ration it or. And, and it would work for some period of time, but it always he would always fall back into his usual pattern. I just don't really know how to help him or like. Well, look, we've all had someone in our life that struggles with addiction that we've tried to get sober using board sports. That's happened to everybody. <laughs> but what I would yeah. say is that is that you I'm listening to you. You've decided that you are in charge of finding a way for him to thrive. You got to get in there, put a stop to this behavior find some way that he's going to be okay. But actually, it seems like the the first step for you would be to find a way to deal with that part of you that thinks you're responsible for his growth. Uh, and it might mean when you, that you'll discover that you're not compatible in a relationship at all anymore. It might mean that you discover you accept his weed smoking. It might mean that you guys work together and he gets sober someday. But the first thing to do, I would say, is for you to find some truth about yourself and your own relationship with his his growth. Like I would say, like you know, an Al-Anon meeting or a therapist. If if twelve step stuff is too weird and gaudy, go to a therapist or some version of like find out what's going on for you so you can really have all the answers. Because you're not you're you're a little. Well, David suggested the thing. The about two talk- to seven seems really fair. Right, but you you yeah you you didn't like that. But when David suggested talking to him, you kind of I noticed. Tell me if I'm wrong. You were like, ah, uh, I've kind of told him. He, sh- I think he knows. But it's like that's your husband. Wouldn't shouldn't you be able to directly tell him exactly what you're feeling? Isn't that kind of the idea? Yeah, I guess I'm just scared to tell him that like if this pattern continues, it's not going to work for me. Right, and. Because that's like, you know, it's making it official. Like, if you don't do this, it's not going to work. Well, you don't and have to like, be that declarative initially, you know, yeah, and yeah. you you want to work with him because you know that he knows that he's active when he's not high 24-7. And, uh, um, you know, there's got to be a balance for that makes the two of you happy. And uh, first things first, get a new bud tender. That's a, absolutely that's, <laughs> that's a great find suggestion. Somebody, yeah, somebody trustworthy. But but also, I, I think it's important for you to to tell him, like you know, I I just I it's hard for me to I don't want to be with someone who smokes pot all day. 
Or I would say, I, I, not to counter you, I would say maybe saying, focusing on the behavior. Because what, okay, you're saying he can't have good behavior if he smokes weed. But the minute you bring up the weed, he's going to get defensive and say, you're just trying to, you know, be my mom. So what if you were to say, here are the things in the relationship that aren't working for me. You're not active. You're not this. You're not that. I need that to change. And then you can, you, then you can approach the drug thing afterwards. The other possibility is for you. Oh, that's a good idea. You, yeah. It's also possible for you to just like, be like less um like a cop and just start getting high too you know what i mean like that might be a cool idea yeah for you so to- the house the house just falls into disrepair <laughs> <laughs> you guys, no, because, you guys have yeah. to take a second mortgage out <laughs> yeah double it you start smoking meth and then like then you can become the problem and he'll focus on you and and also when you are with him you've already got the proof he he sm- stopped smoking pot you guys have so much connection you know, you you love his personality. That's the person you fell in love with. So I think it's okay to tell him how much you love connecting with that person who isn't high. And it's not that you want to feel like he can never get high, but there needs to be more of a balance. Um, and also, whenever someone can afford to like do couples therapy, like just having someone there to help mediate it. I mean, even with Moshe, he's so good at arguing. I cannot even approach something with him because I will always lose because he's just like... <laughs> a crazy wordsmith and knows how to argue way better than me. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's just like get a couples therapy session and let's bring it up there. And just having that mediator can help so much. Not to out you most. And, da- and not to out <laughs> David, but David just sent us a text saying he'd be willing to act as that mediator anytime you guys want <laughs> that he would sit in as a couples therapist for you. For yeah, sure. I'll yeah. Take yeah. Um, yeah. There's a copay involved. I'll, I'll <laughs> get in touch with you about that. Um, this is no, a but really I hard. Moshe thing. said something that was really uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, which is to to forget the drug aspect of it because he'll fill in the blanks on his own. Mm. But just say, "I need you to be more active," and that's a thing you can or can't. I mean, you can if he goes, "What do you mean?" Then you can sit and list exactly how he can be more active, which are you have examples of of, of but you don't ever have to bring weed into it at all. And he'll figure that shit out. Yeah, because he could be a non-weed yeah, smoker. And then you're smoker. not being a cop. And, yeah, and he could be a non-weed smoker. He could be a guy that's addicted to video games or addicted to, you mm-hmm. know, uh, arguing on Facebook or what. It could, it, all the, the net result is the same. You're feeling kind of alone in your relationship. And where's my husband? Yeah. And, and just keep remembering, you deserve to be with that guy who's not high, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and it's it's hard, but you just have to keep telling people what you want and you have to make it really clear and don't assume that he knows he's high. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the problem. He doesn't remember. Uh, a lot of our conversations. Yeah, that's funny, Natasha. I think he knows, though, what I want. I think he picks up on it. No, he doesn't pick. He hasn't picked up on anything. No, no, nothing. And you seem really cool. And I think it's just the more you can get that clean, open communication, reiterate with him what you need, what you expect, try to get a mediator and, you know, just just keep going. And I don't know when the ultimatum comes in. I'm a bitch. I would have the ultimatum come right away and it'd probably be wrong, I guess. I have one final suggestion. You should watch I'm from the Future, the new David Cross stand up special on officialdavidcross.com. It's a great special and it'll bring you two together as a couple. Yeah, okay. it, it, it might help. And I address exactly what you're <laughs> about to, at the very end of the at the end of the special. But, I'll, I'll, it's when I'm looking at a camera and I'm lo- I'm talking to you, Sasha, and your husband. He name okay. checks you. He he mentions like, you by name, your situation, and your specific yeah. names and location. It's really Once again. Intense. I'm from the future, so you know <laughs> I we've had this conversation already. All, All right. right. Well, All right. thank you. All right, and All right good Sasha. Luck, see you at Lake Lanier. You good luck. <laughs> see ya. Well, there we go. These are hard. These are really hard these questions hard. today. These were both hard. They were good. They were Sometimes, David, they're very flippant, as you can imagine. And both of the yeah. ones that called in today were really actual serious situations. I liked it. And I thought we handled it with aplomb. We found lightness. We made fun. Yeah. We gave I good thought, suggestions. I thought you guys had some very uh, good uh, salient points. You too, David. And your special yeah. is hilarious. And everyone should watch it. Thank you. And, and I'm so glad you're doing stand up because you were, you know, so busy. N- not that you're not busy now, but like I feel like I w- always wanted you to be doing more stand up, and now you are. Yeah, I mean, as I said in the thing, a, it, a year and a half—that's the longest I ever spent without getting to do stand up. Because I, I don't know if I went into it. I probably cut all this shit out of there. But the, 
I was in lockdown in Toronto for six months when everything started opening up here. Mm. And I, when we went to Toronto, because my wife was working up there and, uh, you know, we knew because of the kid where we all just had to relocate there. And uh, I was like, it's fine. I'll do stand up. I've, I love Toronto. It's uh, I've done plenty of great, uh, had great shows there. It'll be fine. I'll do stand up. Then, you know, completely locked down. Like you couldn't there. even leave the house and. They Toronto? had, it was called stay at home orders. There were, they were variances to it. Um, uh, the premier of uh, Ontario was uh, Doug Ford, which should tell you, tell you yes. everything. And he just messed everything up. Mm. And, uh, um, and so with, ex- with the exception of a two week period in mid March, everything was shut down. There's no bars, no restaurants, no nothing. Oh uh, you'd have to go to Canadian tire, which is like the target of Canada. And, um, You'd go and put your order in, then you'd wait in line in the fucking snow, and you'd go up to oh my desk, God. and it was it was it was a bummer. It was really depressing, and uh, and there was no back and forth because you had a quarantine for fourteen days each time, and and we you were allowed to pod with a one family that they allowed that, so we had this family with two kids. Um, they would pick one at random, right? A Canadian family at random, <laughs> and they would assign you guys together. Yeah, uh, all yeah, all First Nations. Um, uh, sure. And uh, yeah, and we we could pod, but it was like a six hour trip up into uh, Yellowknife, and uh, <laughs> and you know the tar sands. It was uh, we had to work. Sure. Uh, tar sands. Wait, hold on. I have one more question for David. Since you're smart, okay. What do you think? Like everyone's like, we have nine more days before. Before we're all going to go on lockdown again. Are, are you worried about this next variant or is it just like, are we done? Can we just live our lives? Um, well, it's I, I feel like I I don't have a, a fair place to s- say that from because I just got over COVID a couple days ago. I had uh, after two years of being incredibly safe, but also shockingly traveling in the last four months or so. Um doing a lot of traveling and um i i'm i was surprised that it took that long but i finally got it um and and i'm fully vaxxed and everybody in my family is fully vaxxed and we were just you know uh waiting until my daughter could get vaccinated and uh she is now and um so I'm like, look, I'm, I'm fully vaxxed and I got COVID. It was not a big deal. And so I'm like Superman at this point. So and your daughter you know. did not get it. Nope. From you. And did you no, like my, it? My wife didn't. Did you enjoy did it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was uh, I found myself uh, faking the um, lying about the uh, when I finally tested a negative. So I could because I was locked downstairs where I, I'm in my office right now. Uh huh. Ground floor. No family uh, duties. Oh, you mean you kept texting your family like still a couple more days? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I've got my video games and I slept down here. You were smoking that woman's like, wife, uh, husband's weed. Drinking yeah. off, like, just jerking off for, you know, four times a day and uh, and playing video games. They were like, honey, could you bring some tea to the bottom of the stairs? As you and know, then knock on the door three times. as you know, my doctor said I have to do a 40 day quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, you know what? That does help me because yeah. it wasn't that big of a deal. My only problem is giving it to the daughter, but the it's daughter. like... Our daughter's not vaccinated yet, but you know what? She will be soon. Um, David Cross, is, I'm from the future is the name of the special at officialdavidcross.com. It's a great yeah. special and you should check Thank it out. Thank you guys. And thanks for uh, having me on. This is a, this is a treat. This and nice. David, we'll see you in LA, hopefully at some amazing show. And when we get back to life, can't wait. We'll see you in New York and you are an inspiration. Yeah, well, I'll be out. Uh, Bob uh, Odenkirk and his brother, Bill and I are writing this thing along with a, a woman named uh, Anna Salinas. And uh, uh so I'll be in LA for periods of time and, and I will definitely be doing sets. Uh, um, the only thing that comes close to, you know, the Brooklyn comedy audience is the LA comedy audience and might even be the best audience. LA, LA might have the best comedy audiences in, in the, in America. Um, love that. It's always great there. They're great. Great. LA shows are great. And, um, uh, yeah. 
Well, you're the best. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Okay, David, right. thank I'll you. I'll be at the Ice House with Rich Denny. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I can tell you're a great dad and your kid's so lucky and we're so lucky that you exist. So thank you, David. Oh, bless. Yes. David Cross, right. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thanks, okay, dude. All bye. Right. Well, Natasha... Was I too effusive? He was like, no. a, he's a huge influence. He's a hilarious, legendary guy. I loved his special. And I also love, it's like so many people. I love like, that you're burping on the podcast Shut right now. Up. No, it's cool. So many people are like, don't ever mention COVID. And it's like, we're all processing this. And his special is so funny. And, you know, he's just, he's, that's, that's what real, to me, comedy, the comedy I like is people processing real life. What's and, happening right now. And that is what he's doing in his special. And the comedy I like, just yeah. to be different, is <laughs> I like uh, the comedy where the comedian finds out different ways to turn the stool into a woman that they're having sex with. <laughs> so they're like, I'll pop, pop, pop this way and then turn it over and then becomes doggy style That stool. is really That's funny. That's just the kind of comedy I, I like. I love that too. If you have a secret you'd like to leave on our hotline, call us, 213-222-8608. Or if you want to be on the podcast like our cute little guests today, give us an email. Send us an email at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail. Let our producer know what you're fucking problem is and you can find us on instagram at endless honeymoon pod we're on apple of course uh, subscribe leave a five star leave a rating and on youtube you can always watch the show and natasha if i haven't told you yet today yeah i love you i love you too